And on to the last series of questions that we have. Question 21. Which of the following statements regarding a common law legal system is incorrect? Okay, so I'm looking for the incorrect statement. The model of law in common law countries is the British model. And that's true. That's where it did come from and why we have all those references to the crown and the monarchy, etc. That's true. The two main sources of law are legislation and case law. That's true. Common law system is known for having case law as well as legislation. Courts use an inquisitorial system. No, no, that isn't true, is it? That's uh, more in line with a civil law system that we would see, say, in continental Europe uh, in the countries that borrowed from that continental Europe or Roman or Napoleonic approach. So uh, C is incorrect. D, courts use an adversarial system. Yes, that is the common law system. So that even just reinforces that our answer is C. Courts using an inquisitorial system is incorrect in terms of a common law legal system. Question 22. Which of the following is not an aspect of Aristotle's approach to virtue ethics? Flourishing? Well, that is part of, in fact, you know, you can almost just look at these answers. The categorical imperative, that's Kant's approach. Okay, so that's got to not be Aristotle's approach. Let's just double check. Flourishing, yes, that was what happens when we become virtuous. It's the point of being a human is to flourish. Function is important to Aristotle's approach. We've got to think, what is the function uh, of the person or the thing if we're going to say it's virtuous? Developing the virtues, Yes, Aristotle was big on thinking about how we develop the virtues through habit or training. Virtues or excellences, yes, yes. That's how we know whether we're actually achieving the function. To achieve the function, we need virtues. So the function of a knife is to cut. Um, a virtue, therefore, is sharpness of the knife to achieve that function. And if we just pointed out the category, the the categorical imperative is part of Kant's approach to ethics. So it would be the answer because it's not an aspect of Aristotle's approach. Question 23. Which of the following statements is not an example of Aristotle's function, goal, and the good? Okay, so Aristotle's approach is to say that something and people have maybe a person in a role has a function and that function has a goal to do something and it's good when they're doing that function to achieve the goal. So an investor is someone who buys and sells shares with the purpose of making a financial profit. It's true. A good investor will need knowledge. They'll need to understand how the market operates. And they'll need to be able to act with courage, another virtue. So we can see the virtues of knowledge and courage coming through in terms of Aristotle's virtues. So, so that sounds true. A student is someone who learns through study. Okay, so we've got a goal to learn, that looks good. A good student studies by reading materials and listening to course content. Yep, well, they're learning, right? So that's one of the virtues of, of, um, of, of accumulating knowledge is one of the virtues of Aristotle, so that sounds right. A business person is someone who runs a business. Hmm. Well, that doesn't sound like there's a goal in there, right? There's someone who's running a business. A good business person is very lucky in a competitive world. Luck isn't a virtue. Um, so I, that does not seem to match Aristotle's view. Finally, a real estate agent is a person who sells property. Okay, so that's, that's what their goal is to sell property. A good real estate agent is one who knows the market. Again, so we've got this knowledge and acts with honesty of virtue. So that looks like Aristotle's virtue approach. So the one that isn't is C, quite clearly to me. C does not meet um, the examples of Aristotle's function, goal, and the good. Question 24. Sue recently started work as an accountant for a transport company based on the Gold Coast. During the first week on the job, she discovered a number of unexplained and unauthorised payments made by the senior sales manager. She was concerned that the payments were in breach of the Australian accounting standards and could be illegal. 
When she informed the senior accountant about the payment, she was told not to worry about them. The senior accountant told Sue, they're just payments made by the sales team to potential clients. All the accountants here have been told by the chief executive officer not to worry about them, and so we don't. We all expect you to do the same, or you might find yourself looking for a new job. Mm -hmm. Sue decides to forget about the unauthorized payments because she wants to live up to the expectations of her work colleagues. In making this decision, Sue is demonstrating. Okay, so we've got to work out what she's demonstrating in terms of her behavior. So I'm going to look for a motivation because the core element of most ethics models are the motivation, right? In a Kantian motivation, we're looking to see whether they um, are put in place the reasoning behind the categorical imperative. Utilitarian, uh, they're looking at the benefits and costs in terms of happiness of all the stakeholders. Or we've got the more descriptive Kohlberg's theory of moral development. Now, pretty clearly, this isn't Kantian. Um, I don't see any aspect of universality in her logic. Um, so I can't see any or any maxim. So I, I really can't see any logic here behind Kantian ethics. Utilitarian ethics, well, there's an element where she's living up to expectations of her work colleagues. But remember, a utilitarian ethical approach will have her looking at what all the stakeholders will benefit or lose. And we don't see any of that logic. So that's out. So really, this is about a question more about Kohlberg's theory of moral development. So we've just got to go back to those stages uh, within the theory. Uh, stage one is you want to avoid punishment. Stage two is you see an immediate uh, transactional benefit for you. So you're going to get something out of doing it rather than avoid punishment. Stage three is where we do something because those in our peer group or family or close to us would expect us to do it. Stage four is that's what society expects of us. Stage five means that we've got our own moral or ethical reason for doing it um, and it aligns with what society expects. And stage six, uh, you'll remember, is where we have our own moral reasoning and we'll even not do what society expects or even break the law if we think it's ethically appropriate. So what's Sue doing? Her logic is to forget about the authorised payments because she wants to live up to the expectations of her work colleagues. Okay. So to me, that's pretty clearly in this stage three of Kohlberg's theory of moral development. They're, the colleagues are her peer group and she's doing it. She's at the ethical point of doing it because those close to her or her work colleagues expect it of her. Stage five, of course, would mean she has some moral reasoning for doing it. We don't actually see that in this case. She's only doing it because her friends, her work colleagues expect it. Question 25, last question. Dom has completed his business degree at QUT and is working at an auditor at a top accounting firm. His managing partner is worried about losing a major audit client. And when Dom discovers a breach in internal controls, the partner asks him not to report it as they will have a quiet word to the client to make sure it's fixed. Tom does not agree as the accounting standards requires that this be disclosed and the community expects accountants should follow the accounting standards. Okay, so presuming that Tom's going to carry forth on this, what, what is he doing? Well, he's worried about what the community expects. Okay, and we'll know from the logic of the last question that community expectation or general expectation is stage four of Kohlberg's theory of moral development. Okay, so... What we can see the difference is rather than it being about work colleagues, the reference point is general community standards. So stage four would be our best answer there. Okay, well, that's it for the debrief. Good luck in the mid-semester, and I hope you found this useful.